and basically told Shay that she could F off and die. <laughs> Seeing is believing. Show me the bodies. Hey guys, I'm Danielle and this is Bukhara and this is day one of my Jade Legacy by Fonda Lee reading vlog. This book is massive. I think it's 700 and something pages. When, uh, so basically we're reading the Greenbone Saga with Bookstar of Readalongs. That's a read-along that I host with Amy at A Star Reads and Paige at Pages with Paige. When we did our live discussion for Jade War, which is the second book in the series, um, our fellow readers and read-along participants <laughs> encouraged us to each do a reading vlog of our reactions to this book. Because from what we understand, it, uh, it may or may not rip your heart out and stomp on it. <laughs> so. Um, I cannot guarantee that this vlog, I don't really have a plan, but I cannot guarantee that this vlog is going to be spoiler free. So if you're worried about being spoiled, you have my permission to not watch. <laughs> anyway, I'm only two chapters in at this point. I will, I'll keep you posted. Okay, so this will be interesting to see if I can put this in a coherent way. Um, I am through the first 100 pages in Jade Legacy. It's January, not January, oh lord, it's June 2nd. Um, so I've made really good progress over the last couple days and the reading sprints that we had last night uh, on Amy's channel were very helpful. Uh, so just to give you a little bit of like background of how I've been feeling toward this series, it has a really good balance of action and then is also character driven as well. My issue is, is that I tend to kind of space out <laughs> on the action sequences. So there's quite a bit that just kind of doesn't appeal to me. That said, um, what does go on with the characters does interest me and does tend to outweigh any kind of like boredom, I feel, <laughs> during the action scenes. I apologize to anybody who loves the action. I'm just not one of those people. Um, so... <laughs> I guess big happenings in the first hundred pages. Wen and Hilo have been at odds. She's had a long road to recovery after dying and then being brought back to life in the second book um, by Andon. So Hilo is mad at her because she went behind his back with his sister Shay and was, you know, a white rat, a spy for the king, uh, the clan. Um, was part of the whole killing this Zipunio guy um, who was one of the one of the crew bosses and I think was ultimately responsible for mate Ken's death as well anyway so when Bout got herself killed and has been just going through rehabilitation and whatever Hilo has been awful to her and so in the first hundred pages we did see really how just ugly that was but then also we've seen some glimmers of hope that maybe they're going to be able to move past this so that's good so we've also met another new character named Sunto who 
and I say he's a new character, but he also feels really familiar. So I, I asked in the Discord, like, have we met this guy before? Um, but he's like ex Espinian Navy Angel, and he basically like teaches people who are not naturally green bones to wield jade. Um anyway, he's kind of like Reminded me of Roan Toro, who was a beloved character that we lost in book two. So I don't know if Sunto could be the new Roan or what. So also we had a steamy bit where it looked like Shay and Woon were finally going to be a thing. Um, but that got shut down pretty quickly. So I I said in the Discord, I'm like, I don't know what this says about me, but I was kind of sad that, uh, that they didn't get together. And then there is also um, talk of a mountain tributary clan, um, and it's like Six Hands Unity or something like that, potentially changing allegiances so that could be pretty impactful if it's like legit and not some sort of a scheme um uh yeah and then there was an egotanian plane that got spy plane that got shot down um anyway things stuff and things stuff and things are happening there's just so much that goes on within these stories and it is difficult for me to summarize, but I will do, <laughs> I will do the very best that I can. Um, then also I, I kind of want to focus on more my enjoyment or lack thereof of the story. Um, so yeah, we're gonna learn as we go here. I'm back. <laughs> so it's Wednesday, June 5th, and my original plan was to check in with you when I got another 100 pages read. However, <laughs> I've made it about 50 more pages and I, I had to stop and I had to check in. So as a continuation off of my previous clip, I said that I was sad that Woon and Shay did not get together. Now, <laughs> Woon's wife has approached Shay and told her that she is leaving her husband and basically told Shay that she could F off and die. <laughs> so, <laughs> Woon and Shay, now that the divorce is final, they're getting married. Okay, great. So then, we kind of had some indication that Tar was losing it. And he, there was a chapter titled Green Turning Black and Tar killed Ein, who is his fiance and a fellow green, green bone fist. Uh, so there was a moment where I thought that Hilo was going to have to kill Tar. And the whole time I'm thinking, what is Wen gonna say? Because Wen is, Tar is Wen's brother, her only living brother. Oh, Lord. Okay. So he, I mean, we come like right up to the moment, okay, where he's got the talon knife and he is going to, he's taken Tar like out on the grounds of the call estate and he's going to end his life and he doesn't do it. <laughs> he decides instead to strip Tar of his jade and send him into exile. So then Hilo goes home. Wynne is like over in the corner, just on her knees, crying, just devastated and says, you know, is my brother dead? And Hilo tells her, no, this is what I decided. And of course he's going to have to smooth things over somehow with Ayn's family. Uh, anyway, 
The point I'm trying to get to and what really, really, really has me so excited is that Hilo decided to ask Wen to be his pillarman. So now Wen, his wife, is going to be his pillarman and Shay, his sister, is his weatherman. So Hilo is this pillar of the clan and he's flanked by these two just absolutely badass women. And I am very, very happy <laughs> for the moment. <laughs> uh, also, just to touch on something that I mentioned previously, the whole thing with the Six Hands Unity clan fell through. Uh, there was a betrayal and the Horn of the Mountain wound up showing up. People died. Shay was shot in the thigh. She's fine. Um, and her shadow got killed. So anyway, uh, that's the latest on that. So I will, I will carry on and check back in with you soon. guys so it is father's day which means it's june 16th which means it's been 11 days since i last had any kind of jade legacy update i've been super busy i've made it about 120 pages further and honestly the only thing that really happened that i felt like was noteworthy up until this point was that there was a little segment that talked about and then um, going to Espinia to kind of do like some demon demonstrations with uh, bioenergetic like medicine so to where they use you know andon has been using Jade now to help heal people and he's a doctor now and so I found all of that just very very fascinating um, and so after that now we've fast forwarded probably like seven years, uh, which I was, I was kind of warned that there were going to be some pretty significant time jumps in this book. So, uh, Hilo has just been at one of the KJA meetings and he's sitting there and Madashi, Madashi is like in the same room and all of their whatever advisors and the little um like penitents or like deities or whatever they're all there and Hilo gets this note and it says you are in danger you need to leave on well, the next thing you know uh Mata I, Mata is getting stabbed in the neck by I think Emma this girl that like Barrow has been um pursuing and is also part of like the clanless movement she stabs Aitmata basically um and then Mata kills her and then Hilo blocks the door so that nobody else can leave and go get Mata help and so basically they're just gonna let her die and then somehow Mata like pulls herself up off the floor flings herself out the window but isn't harmed because she's still able to use her like steel abilities lightness and steel and everything and she lands on this van down below and then like stumbles off down the street and Hilo's gonna go after her to like make sure that she dies well then all of a sudden that van explodes and <laughs> and so 
are Hilo and Woon dead now? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but that's where I had to stop for this morning. And so, yeah, I think things are, are going to start happening. I had a little clue when I last checked in on the Discord after chapter 24. I got some indication that chapters 25 through 27 are pretty exciting. That would explain the explosion or as indicated by the explosion. And then uh, Paige sent me and Amy a message in on Instagram saying that at chapter 40 <laughs> is where things really start to go down. So I don't know when I'm looking at the book. I still have so much left. Like, I'm not even halfway. I think I'm on, like, 260-something. I still have a lot of book left. So, anyway. Uh, I'm hoping after Tuesday this week, I should have some days to get some solid reading in. So, I will definitely be checking in with you guys again then. So it's the next day and I think it's like you guys are just going to get a play-by-play -play, I think at this point. Uh, so I feel a little heartless because I got on the discord at the end of chapter 27 and like Amy has said that she you know, like got emotional with everything that's happening and I don't feel a thing. <laughs> um, so the latest is that Shay was watching the news or heard on the news, heard her mother, you know, kind of exclaim from the other room, goes in, sees on the news that the KJA building has exploded. Uh, so Shay leaves her new baby with the mom and then she goes and makes her way down to the financial district and whatever she's down there with like the rubble and Lot is down there and Juin is down there and they're basically all searching the rubble and the ash and the debris and trying to find Hilo and Woon. So Shay's heart she's got like perinatal cardiomyopathy or something like that and her heart is not doing well okay so if Hilo is dead then Shay is the new pillar and I just don't know like physically she's not up to it right now so anyway instead of hanging around the the side of the bombing, she takes off and winds up at the temple where her and Mata have historically had encounters, okay? And Mata is there at the temple, like just mortally wounded and has been trying to heal herself with, you know, channel into herself and heal herself with her own jade abilities. And uh, I don't know, long story short, Mata says something to Shay about how, you know, by nightfall or whatever, you may be the only pillar. And Shay thinks about that for a second and let's go of the talon knife because she's like there and she's over Mata and Mata's in this vulnerable state and Shay's thinking about all the terrible things that have happened in her life that have been you know all traced back to Mata and she's like you know this is it this is my opportunity the uh, penitents weren't even there in the temple this is a sign from the gods that they're gonna look the other way and blah 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 and Shay decides not to kill her because, um, well, K-Con may need the both of them. Wow. Okay. So that's that. And I didn't want to read any further <laughs> until, until I, I told you that. That's, that's what we're dealing with. Shay just had the chance to heal Mata and did not. And also... 
I still haven't seen the bodies of Hilo or Woon, so I still just, I, I don't, I can't believe it just yet. Seeing is believing. Show me the bodies. End of chapter 28. Uh, Anden works to heal Aitmata. Now Swen shows up to take her back to her people. They hear an announcement on the television that Hilo and Woon's bodies have been found and that they are alive. And there's a moment when Anden is trying to decide if he should take advantage of this opportunity and end Aitmata's life. And he decides not to. And he lets them go. And he asks Shay, did I make the right choice? And she's like, I have no idea. It is Wednesday, Juneteenth. And I... I cannot believe it, but I've read over a hundred pages since I last checked in with you guys. <laughs> it's starting to just read really quickly. Um, also, I apologize for any lack of B-roll at this point. <laughs> just, um, I've either just completely been missing those opportunities or just really kind of wanted to be in the moment and didn't feel like filming or I have all kinds of excuses if you'd like to hear them. <laughs> anyway, uh, this morning I was hanging out in the chat of your booktube Bessie's, uh, it's Coda's, Coda's channel. Coda was doing sprints this morning and really had a lot of fun hanging out with Coda and friends. Um, and I did get some really good reading done. So I would say probably about a half a decade has passed since since the bombing at the KJA building. Um, we're, we're really having some developments with the younger generation of the Call family. Namely, Nico is, has decided to... <laughs> Nico, you know, Lon's son, who's supposed to be the future pill pillar. <laughs> um, <laughs> Okay, Lon's son has decided that he is leaving the clan and he is going to be a mercenary for Sunto's business, which is like uh, the GSI or the or the something. Basically, these mercenaries are hired to actually guard the boats that are dredging up jade at the bottom of the the ocean or the sea or whatever. Um, anyway, as you can imagine, Hilo was, Hilo lost his mind <laughs> and, you know, was gonna overreact. Um, Anden talked him down basically by saying, hey, if you don't tell Nico that he can come back to the family when he's ready, uh, because that's what I needed to hear all those years ago. Um, I'm, I'm leaving, you know, I'm, I'm part of this family by choice. I don't, I don't have to be here. So Andon pulled out the big guns, which was refreshing. Uh, and then, um, Rue has, Rue is in college now. He's at John Royal and he has found a group of friends that, um, I'm like trying to think of the technical name for it, but basically they're like, they're like non-reactive people. So, um, stone eyes or like abuke people, people who do not react to Jade and who cannot harness Jade's power. Uh, he's found a group of friends. Like, uh, it's like a club. It's like a sorority or no, it's, it's definitely a club. <laughs> um, so that's new. And then let me think. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, MG. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there's definitely something else. So Megtar has made an appearance again after all this time of being in exile. And he has made an appearance in the same chapter with uh, Jim. No. 
what the heck is the guy's name? Remy. John Remy? Yeah. Yeah. The guy who heads up these, this like, these like snakehead mob guys. <laughs> uh, anyway, Tar is gonna work with John Remy who is on the outs with Hilo. Like, basically this could potentially be bad. This is putting, this is putting Tar directly like at odds with Hilo. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to go. Anyway, I think that gets you guys as caught up as I am. We're somewhere in the 400s now. So we have 300 pages left ish. And I'm feeling really good about this. I think, I think I'm going to get it done by next Friday, which is a week and a half. So, yeah. Hello there. It is Zombie Danielle. I worked from 5 a.m. to 1 p.m. today, and then I came home and I tried to nap, but that wasn't working out. So I'm up, and apparently zombies can read. <laughs> so, uh, remember how I told you that Make Tar wound up approaching uh john remy and i was like this is bad this puts him in you know direct like opposition to hilo uh okay so plot twist um uh, tar and two other guys are earning jade um at this like type of ceremony I don't know and Tar is gonna become like the head viper of, or whatever of the snake heads and so John Remy puts you know Jade on the first guy and Jade on the second guy and then on Tar he puts like a couple extra pieces of Jade on this this necklace or you know it was like some kind of medallion he was wearing around his neck and as soon as Tar gets this Jade on he throat punches John Remy and crushes his trachea and he is dead. And it was like, they just told this Fonda Lee, like she told it backward because then we went back in time and found out that Andon had actually come and to see Tar and to tell him about these issues that they were having with John Remy and how they couldn't, you know, nobody could seem to get to him. And I don't know, Tar wound up getting arrested for killing John Remy and he was in prison for a couple months. He healed from his injuries because he didn't leave that scene without injuries. Um, and then Tar is found in his cell and has apparently hung himself, but then also the chapter was titled, like, Death of Consequence, so I was like, I don't know, maybe I don't fully understand what a death of consequence is, but Tar did that like one final act for the clan and for Hilo and for yeah for no peak and now he's dead <sighs> so that happened
it is Monday, June 24th, and uh, so three days since I have last filmed a clip, um, at least a speaking clip. Uh, I've read almost another six chapters, and I, I know that I need to check in again before I go any further. So the big happenings of these past chapters have been that Shay and Wen went to Shotar on a trip for clan business, okay? And while they were over there, they got Shay and Wen along with Wen's two bodyguards got basically kidnapped by this Faltus um, crew. Basically, they're bad guys over there that have a connection to the mountain. So, when gets released after a short period of time being held captive by these guys, uh, because Hilo paid a ransom of Jade and money, I guess, to have her be free. And then they were, they, the bad guys said, okay, yeah, we'll release Shay as well. As long as you get all of your people, all of your business, everything out of Shotar. So after Wynn was released, she told Hilo, no, that's not true. They're not going to stay true to that word. Ultimately, they're going to kill Shay. So they torture Shay and they put her in like a, basically a bathtub of Jade, the Jade that Hilo had given them as part of Wynn's ransom. And Shay is like lo slowly losing her mind. Um, they're dosing her with like this this SN2 drug to keep the jade overexposure from like killing her too quickly. Um, so anyway, Shay is just in a really bad place. She has been forced to give up the names of certain of their white rats, certain of their spies that they have over there. And finally, Hilo does something that uh, we probably never ever thought he would do in a million, million years. And he went to Aitmata and he got down on his knees and he asked her to help him get his sister back. And so Mata pulled some strings and they Hila well actually the no peak men and the no peak green bones and the mountain green bones wound up um basically ambushing these bad guys in this house that they were holed up in and rescuing Shay and they're pulling Shay out of there and Shay's on this stretcher and one of the green bones that she didn't recognize that was from the mountain um, he's like, yeah, Ayamata sends her regards. So <laughs> I think when Shay and Wen got taken captive, I, that was like the first time in the book when I really felt my emotions start to come to the surface. Um, especially since when had already been through something so horrible, something like comparably horrible in book two, I was like, and she had, she had just this massive like recovery to get back to where she was. Um, yeah, I just, I was like, not again. Oh my gosh. So, um, so anyway, uh, that's where we're at. <laughs> uh, that's where we're at. Also, I did want to say that since this is Monday the 24th, uh, we're, we're at the final countdown now. Like, this week is the week to get it done. And I'm feeling pretty good. I have that much further to go. So, 
yeah, in a fairly um, reasonable work schedule this week. So I'm really going to try to try to bust this out. So you should be hearing from me again soon. Okay, I just had to read this little bit to you. Uh, I'm at the end of chapter 48. Um, and Hilo has just asked Shay what she will do if she can never wear jade again because of the torture she endured. Um, she just can't even stand to be near it anymore. And Shay's kind of sitting here thinking to herself, it was strange, Shay thought. Green bones revered jade, but it was not the gems themselves that were worthy of reverence. Jade had meaning because of the type of person one had to become to wear it. Jade was the visible proof that a person had dedicated their life to the discipline of wielding power, to the dangers and costs of being a green bone. She did not require proof anymore. She was past needing to carry her green as a coveted mark of status and credibility, one that declared to everyone that she was equal to her brothers and worthy of being a call. She had two decades on, on the top floor of Ship Street to do that for her. She had work to do now, to rebuild from their losses, to guide the clan and the country toward growth and progress, to keep it safe from outside threats, but also from the peril of its own worst impulses. What will I do? She asked quietly, turning to her brother and touching her hands to her forehead in salute to the pillar. My job as weatherman of no peak. That is so Shay. That is so Shay. What will I do? I'm gonna do my job, Hilo. <laughs> I don't know. I just really love that part. So I am not okay. <laughs> I just finished chapter 49 and oh my gosh you guys I don't even know where to start so Rue which is Hilo's son his stone eye son um, he'd been hanging out with this guy named Dano at his college and they've got midterms coming up and Dano says, oh, hey, let's go to this, this bar, the Little Persimmon. Of course, it's in mountain territory. And let's blow off some steam. So they go. And Dano introduces Rue to this guy, to Dino, who's the bartender. And I'm like, man... That name sounds really familiar. <laughs> so Tadino is in cahoots with Barrow, who is has been our bad guy from day one. Like, I don't even like to talk about Barrow because we've all just grown to hate him so much. So Tadino is there, Barrow is there, uh, Rue and Dano are there. And Rue gets introduced to this girl, Junie. Um, and Junie basically comes on to him. Basically, they've gone to like a back room to get it on. And in the meantime, Tadino tells Barrow, you know, like, make sure they stay there. He's going to call... Coben Ashi, who is a fist of the mountain and is also Junie's boyfriend. And Coben Ashi gets there. He starts laying into Rue. Rue finally says, pulls out his talon knife and is like, you know, Rue's going through this whole mental process of like, he doesn't know who I am. You know, Barrow had already told Rue, like, you've been set up. Um, and so Rue pulls out his talon knife, says, hey, I'm, um, call Rulin, Sean. <laughs> I think that's how you say his whole name. Um, and I am challenging you to a clean blade 
duel. And so the lights start to go on for um, Kobanashi, and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, <laughs> he stops beating the crap out of Rue, and between the two of them, they put it together that they've been set up and that this guy, Tadino, from the clanless movement, um, basically, once again, was trying to start a war between the mountain and No Peak. So, Rue instead decides to offer a clean blade to Tadino, um, because it'll be a fair fight, neither of them wear jade, and then you know, Rue says to Kobanashi, like, if I beat this guy, like, we're good, you know, there's not gonna be any, like, grudge between the two clans, so Kobanashi agrees, and Tadino's like, oh yeah, I'll fight you, but without a blade, he just wanted to fight with fists, so Rue's like, okay, and you know, he's been trained by his father since, you know, his Hilo wasn't going to leave him defenseless, so Rue's actually a really good fighter, um, even without the blade, and he's beating the crap out of Tadino, and is like, at this point, on top of him, and just going to beat him to death, so Tadino, uh, he's feeling desperate like he knows that Rue is like just about to beat the life out of him and he grabs the talon knife off of Rue's belt and slices Rue across the throat there was nothing that could be done to save him you know they they watched the life just drain out of him and Kobanashi now has killed Tadino, killed his girlfriend, and has basically told Barrow that, you know, you're gonna go out and you're gonna tell everybody that you come in contact with the truth of what you saw here, because he's, he's st still trying to make it to where he's not gonna be at fault for what went down, <laughs> you know, uh, anyway absolute cluster and so now uh so now I guess I'm gonna go find out <sighs> I'm gonna go find out what um what happens after this news gets to Hilo I I can't I really cannot believe this I I mean I can but Rue was such a good son um, and just really loved his family and just really had a good attitude overall. Like even, even with, with being someone who was non-reactive to Jade, he knew he would never be the pillar, you know, but, like, he still was, like, doing the best that he could with what he had. He was still trying to, like, represent his family in a way that would make them proud. And, you know, even had plans to eventually go and work with his Aunt Shay on, you know, the business side of the clan. So, this is just a really unnecessary loss and a really sad loss and I think I think this is going to be the catalyst now like for how the rest of this book plays out
Good morning again. It is Tuesday, June 25th, and I have read another 77 pages since I saw you yesterday. Um, so I'm down to about the last hundred, just over a hundred. I'm trying to think exactly <laughs> the highlights. Um, there was a moment where Nico had actually tracked down Barrow to get some information from him on what he knew about Agent M, um, which was this Malovny guy that was part of the Clanless Future Move. Yeah, that was part of the Clanless Future Movement. Um, anyway, Barrow was like drunk in this moldy apartment and he was like, he told Nico what he wanted to know about Malovny and then he was like, that's all? Like, that's all you want from me? And basically he wanted to get boastful and like start bragging about how he killed Juan all those years ago and Anyway, Nico just wasn't having it. And he was like, hey, dude, like, if you want to end your life, like, you go ahead and do it yourself. But don't fool yourself into thinking that it has any meaning. So, I mean, it was like the ultimate burn, in my opinion. Um, so, that happened. And then Shay read, first of all, they were all excited because whatever law had passed that um, would make Jade legal. Um, I think especially in Espenia. Um, it's just something they, they had been working toward for a really long time. Like, if you remember, I mentioned that Andon at one point had gone over to show how uh, bioenergetic medicine is useful and all these other things. Um, anyway, so some of the, like, stigma about wearing jade is starting to get lifted and, like, that's what they've been working towards. So they were all excited about that. And then Shay saw a newspaper clipping or something to that effect about the human deal, which was something that she, when she was in captivity and she was being tortured most recently, well, no. I say, I shouldn't have said most recently. When she was in cap, when she was in captivity recently and was being tortured by the Faltus gang, um, they had asked her, what is the human deal? And she, this was when she was just finally kind of at her breaking point, but also she had enough awareness to know like, okay, I don't actually know anything about that. And her instincts were saying like, that's significant. Well, now she's seen this newspaper article that I can't really tell you all the specifics of it. It's, to me, it's very complicated, but basically, and what matters is that this deal will give Aitmata and the mountain enough power to finally be able to uh, take out No Peak. Like, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, no, that is where I'm at. So I guess we'll see what happens. I, I did want to say too, <laughs> I did finally cry yesterday. <laughs> um, not like sobbing, but definitely like tears to the point where my, I had to like wipe my eyes because I couldn't even see to read. And that was at the point where uh, they were at Rue's funeral and just everything that came with that. I thought there was a, there was a moment when Shay said to Tia, they had, they had tossed some flowers down on Rue's, um, 
coffin or casket and Shay said to Tia, you know, your uncle Lon will be so glad to have Rue basically in heaven with him. Something, I don't know, it was just really sweet. That got to me and then the funeral was actually when we got Nico's return and it was funny for a moment I thought the moment when my eyes teared up I thought when was gonna like embrace him and then I'm like I'm like wiping my face and then I keep reading and she smacked him <laughs> anyway um they Hilo welcomed Nico back and said you know, you're back in the family. So, and since then, Nico has like really stepped it up to the point where Shay thinks that him like throwing himself in to everything to do with the clan and learning everything that he can is kind of his way of dealing with missing his brother. So, um, so yeah, I'm glad Nico is back. I think when he really, uh, now that he's really decided to apply himself, I think he's going to be a force. So let's see what we get read today. <laughs> Okay guys, so it is Wednesday, June 26th, and I have three chapters left in Jade Legacy. Unfortunately, I am going to have to leave for work soon, so this will probably get done, I'm going to say tomorrow morning, um, but I do want to catch you up as best I can. I know when I last spoke, I mentioned that Shay was freaking out because she figured out what the human deal was and that that was basically going to give Aitmata all the power and control that she needed to finally eliminate No Peak. So Shay and Hilo, their whole like crew, Anden, Jaya, um, Nico, like everybody, Lot, everybody basically just put their heads together and did their part and they foiled Mata's plans. And I could go into detail about that, but it's a lot. And so I think I'm just going to tell you that they were successful. That now Ait Mata has stepped down as Pillar of the Mountain. And she has um, given that role over to Ait Addo or... I think that's how you say his name. I Ato. It's A T O. Anyway, um, so there is a meeting in the works for the new pillar of the mountain and um, Hilo, Nico. I'm not sure who else is going to be at the meeting, but basically, they're wanting to have. Um, just kind of a time of peace, a time of friendship and cooperation. And, you know, that's the way that they're leaning for this new generation. So it sounds like after this recent family dinner that they've had, that Hilo is going to let Aitmata live um, until some time has passed and you know, reasons, but basically he's, he's allowed his family to think that, but then we're getting a glimpse, um, between a conversation between him and when, um, in the privacy of their bedroom. And she's like, so when is it going to happen? So basically Hilo has set this up to where, you know, Nico is not going to be able to be blamed. Um, Lot is not going to be able to, to be blamed, but he still has every intention of 
taking out Mata. And then we flash forward Mata and, um, what's his name? Iwe Kalendo, I think that's her weatherman's name. Um, they are also apparently up to something. So it sounds like Hilo and Mata are going to try to take each other out. We're going to find out. I knew that everything was kind of just going way too smoothly. So um, I'm nervous. I'm nervous for these last three chapters. had to take a while and collect myself. <laughs> uh, you guys. <laughs> um, okay. What was the last thing I told you? Nico, Hilo, and Shay were going to meet with Ait Addo, who Ait Mata had you know, conceded the the pillar role of the Mountain Clan to Addo, and they were going to have this meeting in the KJA building to declare, you know, their friendship moving forward and just um, declare that they would be cooperating with one another, etc., etc. Uh, I had mentioned that there were hints that Hilo and Mata were still like after one another and what ended up happening was that Hilo's guys went to Mata's house during this meeting and Mata had escaped through a tunnel underneath the home. This home was apparently formerly like the property of the clanless future movement and there was an escape tunnel so Mata escaped Hilo's at the meeting he gets a text from Lot saying she's escaped she's not here Hilo tries to keep himself under control and not give anything away so Nico and Addo exchange blades and everything that is need to be said to kind of solidify this alliance has, has happened. And one of the four penitents in the room, these holy men, pulls a weapon, but not before Hilo, who had been in tune to everyone, every aura in the room, Hilo shoots this guy, but then before this guy can shoot Addo. And then it just kind of spirals from there. Hilo died, <laughs> not right away, but, um, <sighs> I did not think I would be this torn up about this. Okay, so Hilo died. 
Um, and that was really, really sad. Um, and just the showing outside of his home, outside of his home of the, of the green bones and just, um, it was just so moving. Um, Wynn's grief just wrecked me. Um, and yeah, basically, Aitmata never planned to cede the, the mountain clan to Addo. She never had any respect for him. She was going to take Addo out, take everybody else in that room out, and then she was going to uh, pronounce that Iwe Kalundo was the new pillar, and she was basically, he was going to be like her puppet, and she was basically going to be controlling things behind the scenes. The penitents in the room that started firing upon everyone, they were actually former... GSI guys and yeah Mata had base which was um Sunto's guys and so basically Mata was gonna pay them an exorbitant amount of money to be the be these assassins so in the three months following Hilo's death um Addo and Nico met. Basically, Addo does not think that the Mountain Clan is going to survive and that it will eventually be absorbed into No Peak. So really, after all of this, No Peak is still coming out on top. Um, Nico is Pillar, and then Shay is his weatherman, and then Lot is still his horn. Um, there was some talk of maybe Make Cam becoming his pillarmen and yeah some other things will eventually get shifted around Jaya was Jaya was a tornado she was a hurricane she was she was not okay after she um got home after her father's passing uh just a huge reaction from a huge personality so I wasn't overly surprised about that um and who knows maybe you know, I know this is fictional, but maybe uh, eventually Jaya would become um, Nico's horn. I think there were probably some conversations about that. I, Mata, I don't know. I don't know um, how I how I really feel about how that ended. Nico decided. Nico sent Andon um, to see Mata a few months after Hilo's passing, and basically told her that she was going to be exiled. She had already been stripped of her jade. Um, she was going to be exiled to like the Uiwa Islands and like basically she was just supposed to live out her days there and die and if she did that and did it without um, you know stepping foot on KCON or like interfering in the Greenbone um, life uh, in any way, then she would get to come back after she died and be buried, like, with her family. So, um, I don't know. I don't know. And, and it was kind of left open, like, who knows? She may, may have still eventually decided to take her own life. I don't know. It was just, basically, Nico, that was what he decided to do, um, how I understood it was like, you know, she wasn't getting to go out with like a big bang. Like she was, it was made, it was meant to kind of like make her feel insignificant. Like Nico couldn't be bothered to give her a second thought, give her any more power, you know, over his life. Uh, so, and then, <laughs> and then the final scene was Andon heading to the Twice Lucky restaurant and the cab driver was apparently Barrow. <laughs> Didn't say Barrow, but it gave enough clues that 
we could surmise. This was Barrow driving, driving this cab and saying to Andon, oh, you know who hangs out at the Twice Lucky, the Call family, and oh, I could tell you some stories, KK, and blah, 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 blah. So <laughs> anyway, somebody said in the Discord, like, Barrow's like a like a Twinkie or a cockroach, like no matter what, like <laughs> they just can't be, they just can't be destroyed. So I really, I can't wait to talk to everybody about this tomorrow night. Um, so it'll be Friday the 28th tomorrow. Um, hopefully we've got some people going to tune in for the live show. If you're watching this video, hopefully you can catch the replay to hear, hear our thoughts, but I'm excited to talk to everybody. I'm like, y'all are going to have to console me. <laughs> I, I really, I reserved my opinion about this series because, you know, I, I wouldn't like wholeheartedly recommend it up until this point because I just, I didn't really know how to feel that, like I said before, the action parts just really did not do it for me. And what I really care about as a reader is the characters, obviously. <laughs> um, but I'm really, I really am. I, I have a record now. This video is a record and I am saying I really am glad that I read this series. I would recommend it. I did grow incredibly attached to this family and yeah, I mean, I'm getting emotional just thinking about it. So for me, a book that can move you like that and especially move me like that. <laughs> uh, I, I'm giving it five stars. I am giving it five stars and I do recommend. So <laughs> probably if you're watching this, you've already read it. And um, if you made it to book three, you probably agree. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this vlog. This was a labor of love and yeah, and I'm proud of it and I'm I'm really just happy to have spent this time with you. Let me know in the comments, is there another series like this that you would recommend? Another series, especially kind of with that family dynamic that you just really, over the course of, of the books, really grew attached to those characters. I'd love to hear about it, always. And until next time, guys. <laughs> Bye.